I was like, you know, there's got to be a bigger market for it across the whole country. So I, I started putting supplements on eBay um, yep. using my, my kind of knowledge of e-commerce. And it just like, it just, just, just blew up. Um, you know, it was yeah, crazy. I awesome. was the first person to sell supplements on eBay back when eBay was like auction only. So- Let's go. Joe, hey man. All right, we're in. Apologies. We are. Thank you so much for coming I was, on. I was I was trying to connect from my um, from my MacBook, and I I don't know what happened. It like logged in, <laughs> logged out, and so I'm on my phone now. So I thought I'm just going to use my phone. And, and actually, I didn't check the battery, so hopefully we're we're sweet. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's cool, man. Look, oh, Facebook is always yeah. against us. This is pretty standard. Where I, I could count on one hand where we've had guests manage to get it on like straight away. So don't stress at yeah. all. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah. So yeah, thanks so much for coming on the show. Thank you for having me, man. It's uh, it's a, a pleasure and an honor to uh, to be doing this with you this afternoon. So thank you. No, man, the, the honor is all mine. I'm I'm humbled that you've come on the show. So thank you very much. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. So yeah, being a business podcast, really, we it's it's all about business. You know, with entrepreneurs, with yourself being such a successful Australian entrepreneur, is you know really someone to look up to in the business space, especially on yep. a uh, you know not only an Australian level but an international level. So that's awesome. Mm-hmm. So. Really, just love to hear about your story because, you know, not many people know back in the day about, you know, when you were, uh, I do believe uh, you were still on Centrelink. Is that right? When you first started Massa Joe's or was that, uh, you know, I'd love to know about that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I guess like how far back do you want me to go? <laughs> it's your episode, man. We can go wherever you like. <laughs> how long do we have? I can yeah. get to, um... What I might do is, uh, you know, when, when I've done podcasts in the past, is I kind of give a little bit of a contiki tour um, as to kind Let's of you know, the, the grassroots type stuff and, and fly through it pretty quickly. And then, you know, if you want to kind of want me to drill down into different bits and pieces, I can kind of drill down from there. Um, else we'd be here for the rest of the day talking about. Uh, <laughs> talking yeah, about man, it's all good. It, it, yeah, it's a very yeah. organic chat, really. There's, there's no yeah. set structure. It's more just we'll, we'll go wherever you want to go and, and we'll, you know, sure. go, go from there. Yeah, cool. So um, back to back to kind of how this whole thing started was uh, when I was uh, younger in my in my uh, childhood and teenage years, I used to play a lot of basketball. Um, so I was a big basketballer, played for uh, district teams here in South Australia, played for SASE, the South Australian um, Sports Institute. Uh, played yeah, cool. For, you know, I was playing for everyone. I was a big, big basketballer. And, and it, well, man, you're super tall, so it makes sense. <laughs> Not in the basketball <laughs> world, in the bodybuilding world I am, but in basketball, yeah. I'm sure <laughs> um, But yeah, so, uh, so big basketballer, um, and through basketball, I was kind of introduced to weight training as a, as a way of strength and conditioning, um, you know, so to, to cool. perform better as a basketballer. Um, unfortunately, I developed injuries in my lower back, um, stress fracture injuries, um, and quite rare injuries where I had developed uh, two stress fractures on the same vertebrae in my lower back. Mm, and that that's rough, man. Yeah, when I was uh, 18, the second one developed, which pretty much ended anything that I could possibly do with, with basketball, um, you know, into the future because there's just my body wouldn't wouldn't allow me to do it. So course, at that point, yeah. I, um, so at that point, um, you know, my doctor, my physio on that, you know, they said, look, you know, the basketball thing is kind of over, um, you know, but, you, 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 you know, you should you should spend more time in the gym, um, you know, lifting weights because it's low impact. Um, you know, there's smaller risk of injury to your back and it will help you stay fit and healthy and, um, you know, and, and whatnot. So I was like, okay, well, yeah. you know, I've been introduced to, to lifting weights for strength and conditioning and, you know, I, I kind of like it. You know, I always like lifting weights. Um, and uh, so I started spending more time in the, in the gym, in the weights room. Um, and then my, my competitive streak kind of came out in that regard and, nice. and did, uh, <laughs> yeah, um, and uh, entered some, some natural bodybuilding shows. I did the first one when I was 19, um, did quite well, um, did, you know, and, and then kind of, you know, progressed through the, the competing in natural bodybuilding shows and, and was doing quite well. Um, and I took an interest in supplementation um, as a, uh, once again, as, as to, to kind of get, a, a, I guess, an advantage on my competitors. Um, you know, I, I started looking at, at supplements and taking an interest in them as a as a performance enhancing um, uh, vehicle for for yep. natural bodybuilding. Um, and at the time, 
there really wasn't a lot available in Australia. I mean, we had a few companies, but the, you know, the protein powder tasted like cardboard. No one was doing pre-workouts, amino acids. You, know, you just couldn't get them. So I yeah. started taking a lot of interest in supplementation coming out of the US. So I started importing um, supplements to use myself, you know, to, to, cool. to help me perform as a, as a natural bodybuilder. Um, and I guess it was kind of a combination of, at the time, I was at university, 19 years old, so I was at uh, first year uni. Um, so I was, you know, a, a big guy in the gym, so to speak. They, they, they called me Massive Joe, which is, you know, later on down the back <laughs> where the man comes from. Um, yeah, love it. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so, you know, the guys, I kind of had, I had a reputation at the gym as being, you know, the Massive Joe dude. And then I was winning these competitions. And back then, like competing it was so rare, you know, now everyone does a bloody competition, whether it's bikini or physique or fitness or whatever it is. Back then there was none of that. It was bodybuilding or bodybuilding. Um, and there weren't many people. Yeah. <laughs> bodybuilding. Um, so, you know, if you yeah. were a competitive bodybuilder, it was kind of a big deal. So people kind of knew me by reputation and at the gym and then they'd see I was winning these shows and then they'd start kind of see, you know, what, what is this this drink that this guy's drinking before he trains? And then I had the you know the coloured stuff in my in my water bottle or my <laughs> yeah, right there. Like, Here's something I prepared earlier. Training. Yeah, yeah. And then I finished training and and I had my protein shake and no one was doing that back then. So people started asking me questions about it and so you know I, I told them you know this is pre workout this is amino acids this is protein powder etc cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, and so you know they'd be like well can you get me some next time you do an order. I was like, sure, no problem. So next minute, I'm supplying everyone that trains at Adelaide Uni Gym with their pre interim and I think we've lost Joe there for a sec. There we go. So, you know, literally out of the back of my car, supplying all these gym rats back then yeah. <laughs> um, because those were the only people that took supplements um, at all the universities with, with all these subs. Um, so it, you know, it, it, it grew quite quickly just in person to person selling and whatnot. Um, and then I kind of thought, you know, I, I'd always kind of dabbled with, with e-commerce with, with selling stuff online. So, you know, back when I was at high school, um, you know, back well, early when I was on high school, I used to, I was that kid that like would go to the supermarket and buy like a 24 like cube of like Coke and then like yeah. take it to, take it to school and like undercut the the tuck shop. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> but, like, I love it. Yeah. <laughs> so everyone would come buy coke from me and you know, I get in trouble for that shit. Um, yeah. But I always took an interest in, in that. And then obviously e-commerce. So when I was in high school, I used to sell. Um, do you remember those Lance Armstrong Livestrong bracelets? Like the like. Oh, like the, the little plastic ones. Yeah. Yeah, like the yellow ones. They were like the first, you know, the first like silicon bracelets. So I used to yeah. buy buy those from, from Nike in the US and import them and, and then sell them on ebay.com.au. Um, I sold iPods when I, uh, I, yeah, iPods when they first came out um, on, on eBay. So I was, I was always interested in e-commerce. And so I kind of took those two together. I was like, man, if I'm selling, you know, this, this amount of supplements just locally, um, yeah. you know, the, out the, 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 literally out the back of my car to all of these gym members in South Australia. There's got to be a big got a trench coat. Like... <laughs> yeah, that's it. yeah. What can I offer you? Yeah. Um, but, uh, I was like, you know, there's got to be a bigger market for it across the whole country. So I, I started putting supplements on eBay um, yep. using my, my kind of knowledge of e-commerce and it just like, it just, just, just blew up. Um, you know, it was yeah, crazy. I was awesome. the first person to sell supplements on eBay back when eBay was like auction only. So it wasn't, there was no buy it now or anything like that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and you know, that was a while ago. Like, yeah. Yeah. It was a long time ago. That was, that was like 2005. Um, so long, long time ago. Um, but yeah, so I started doing that. Um, and, uh, and back then I was, you know, buying, buying supplements for like, you know, landing them for 30 bucks and then people would bid them on eBay up to like 130 bucks. So it was nice. you know, crazy. Back up. <laughs> yeah, it was crazy, you know, especially as like a 19, by then, you know, 20 year old, um, you know, it was, it was ridiculous cause I was comparing it to, you know, the other sources of income that I had back then, which was, you know, I was coaching basketball, I was doing a little bit of tutoring and whatnot. And I was yeah. like, man, this is awesome. Um, the shits are my $12 so, an hour. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <exactly. laughs> um, so 
so yeah, so I did 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 uh, did that. Sold on eBay for a while, um, and then what I found, you know, as any kind of you know first mover in a market finds, is their profits very quickly get eroded. So competition came quite quickly, and so you know, I wasn't um, you know making the the sorts of uh, margins that I was you know initially making. That that wasn't going to be a yeah. long term thing, so I needed to get off that platform. Um, and, and onto my own website. Um, so I got with a, a friend of mine at university who was uh, doing web design um, and, uh, and cool. launched the first, the first version of, of MassiveJoes.com. Um, yeah, that's phenomenal. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, I guess that's kind of where, you know, Massive Joes that we, we see today, that's kind of, you know, the, the real grassroots, the, the seeds of, of kind of how it started. Yeah, that's awesome. And, and that's the thing, like, especially if you had the entrepreneurial drive as a kid or as a teen, like just taking that into adulthood and just moving forward is awesome. Cause, uh, you know, it's, mm. it's, a, it's a, you've brought it phenomenally. Like, um, I used to sell back in the day, um, when yeah, eBay was a little bit older. Um, but yeah, you yep. used to just import sunnies from Alibaba before anyone knew what that was and, uh, yep. you know, selling them on eBay. And then, uh, yeah, one day I had a, um, uh, an email or a purchase and the address was actually Mr. Oakley himself. So I was like, yeah, I'm going to stop go. doing that now. <laughs> so I was like, oh, sorry, they got damaged in the mail. So I have to cancel yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, man, that's awesome. And the fact that you started your own platform, you really, really moved away from eBay. Did you stay on eBay for a while as well while you got yourself established through your own website? Yeah, absolutely, man. I mean, we, we still sell on eBay today. Um, oh, you know, cool. That, okay. That, that side of, of the, the supplement market in Australia has changed a lot over the years. Um, but we, I mean, like eBay has always been a part of, of, of Massive Joe's. It's a much smaller part now than it used to be. Um, it's yeah. more like a clearance, something we use for kind of clearance of, of uh, you know, products approaching expiry or products that we don't want to carry anymore. Um, but, uh, you know, that was, it, it was a significant part of the business, um, you know, for many years. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, fantastic. So everyone tuning at home, if you know who today's guest is, please say hello. We'd love to hear from you. Smash that like button just so everyone can uh, spread the word that uh, Massive Joe is on today. You know, really yeah. uh, fantastic. Really looking forward to this. So yeah, Joe, um, so yeah, really from there. So you started to grow that. And then what was the next move into, I guess, from the online store? Did you then, um, did you, you stayed at uni for a while? Is that right? Or did you continue to, um, did you kind of shift into the full-time space? Yeah, so no, I stayed at uni for a long time, <laughs> probably yeah. too long. Looking, looking <laughs> okay, <up. laughs> definitely too long. Um, so I, uh, I, I, at university, I studied a, a double degree in mechanical engineering and law. Um, yeah. So I finished. I actually uh, finished my degrees in two thousand and eleven. Um, was was when everything kind of finished. So I was I was running Massive Joe's, um, you know, the whole time while I was at uni, effectively, because I started it in my first year. Um, you know, and, and still run it today. So it, it, it kind of, you know, was was kind of, I guess, a, a part time thing for for a, a lot of years while I was while I was studying university. So um, yeah. yeah, there was there was kind of a, a lot of things happening at that point in time. <laughs> but it wasn't, yeah, uh, yeah, it definitely wasn't. Um, you know, it wasn't that I was studying and then I found this business opportunity, and so I stopped studying and pursued the business opportunity. I kind of, you know, I wanted to finish what I started. Um, and yep. so I was kind of juggling, a, you know, a lot, a lot of different things at, at, at the same point in time. So, and and that's the thing. It's it's you know all these say overnight success. It's like fuck. It's like ten years in the making. So it's it's not just yeah. all of a sudden, you know. Yeah, and, and you know what? Yeah. It's 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 interesting that you say that because it's something that that I've come to appreciate. You know, my, myself and and you know people that I see in in this industry and then in other industries as well is that you know a lot of the time the the, the so called quote unquote overnight success um, is like your businesses that are like twenty years old. Um, yeah. and you're just hearing <laughs> yep. about them now, but there's been someone who's been you know grinding for for decades um you know behind the scenes i mean you look at you look at all the, the 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 biggest businesses in the world at the moment and they all have that story you look at apple you look at amazon you look at google um you know and and to a lot of people when they first hear i know in australia at the moment amazon's just opened here in australia so a lot of people are like oh what's this amazon you know this is yeah yeah they got sort of fba it. over in melbourne <laughs> yeah but amazon's been around for like 30 years it's just yep. you know You've just heard of it now, but it's definitely not an overnight success. It's, you know, someone's been, been putting in the hard yards for, for decades. So Yeah, absolutely. I mean, even coming back to Alibaba, when that went public, that turned into a yeah. billion dollar business or company overnight. And I was like, fuck, I should have bought into it. 
you could see the way it was going as well. It was just, you know, and it just blew up overnight. And, and that's the thing. Yeah. It took so long for them to actually build that. Um, yeah. Very similar to Massive Joe's where you had to put in the hard yards in for so many years. And then, you know, finally going full time into that. And then you can fully focus on it opposed to it just being a, a part time hustle as such. And, uh, you know, look yeah. where you've, you've brought it to now. So yeah, you've done phenomenally. Yeah, absolutely, man. So once, uh, yeah, I guess once you started and you started progressing on, so how did you then move into the next stage of your business? Um, I guess for, you know, when you started hiring a team and was the, uh, the apparel early on as well or was that later on? Um, no, well, I mean, the, the, so I'll just dissect that into two parts. I'll start with the, the apparel side of things. So the, the apparel was, was real early on um, and pretty much it started off because, um, you know, we, we couldn't really, no one was making apparel for, for the gym. You know, it, it was, you know, people were making running apparel and basketball apparel and like sports specific apparel, but no one was making apparel specifically for the gym. Um, so the apparel thing yeah. kind of came along because the guys, you know, we wanted to wear shit that, you know, was specific to lifting. So we just went and made it, um, you know, pretty much yeah, for, ourselves, nice. for ourselves to wear. <laughs> so that's kind of where yeah. that came from. Um, in, but in terms of, um, you know, like growing the team and, and, and growing the business and that sort of thing. So when I, when I finished university in 2011, um, that was really the, the, the kind of, you know, the um, breaking point, so to speak, where I was able to go, okay, you know, I finished, um, I finished my studies. I now can direct all my energy at something, um, you know, whether that's going to be full-time work as an engineer, full-time work as a lawyer um, or massive go. Um, and so yeah. I chose at that point Massive Joe's and that was really where, where, where re the business, I guess, really started to take off because I was able to invest myself uh, 100% in the business instead of it being kind of like a, high, uh, a, a side hustle type thing. Um, yeah, so exactly. 2011, so 2011 was when I signed the lease on our first um, headquarters, our first warehouse, MJHQ, uh, the, the original down on, on Woodlands Terrace. Um, okay, yeah. and, and when I started hiring people as well. So, um, you know, that was, I mean, the original HQ was our first retail store. Um, the retail stores are kind of a little bit further down the, down the track. But that was the point where, you know, I knew that investing myself 100% in the business, I was really going to make this thing, you know, um, you know a, a, a proper business. Um, yeah, you're all in as such. Yeah, all, exactly, all in, um, and that's when you know that that uh, I, the requirement for staff kind of came along, um, you know, staff in different parts of the business that I could start delegating, you know, literally like packing the orders, processing the orders, getting back to customer queries and whatnot, yeah. and just that sort of all stuff the fun stuff. I, yeah, but you know, the stuff that I could kind of delegate that would just allow me to free up my time to focus on growing the business, um, you yeah. know, which which is a challenge that I still. Uh, you know, I think any business owner um, struggles with that throughout the life of a business. It's still something today where I'm like, man, like I just I need more time in the day. Um, you know, so what can I delegate? What can I get someone else to do to free me up to, to do something, um, you know, more valuable, uh, for lack of a better term, that's, that's really going to help the business get to the next level. So. Yeah, well, that's it. Well, you've got to really work on the business as much as you can opposed to working in it. And, that, and that's what staff's for. Yeah, yeah, that's what good staff's for. Yeah, <laughs> yeah okay, yeah, good stuff. <laughs> yeah, fair call. <laughs> yeah. Oh, shit, yeah. Well, I mean, I guess like, because, yeah, it's, it's always going to be one of those things where no matter how, what stage of the business you're in, it's always a matter of, you know, delegating your time better. But, I mean, with, with all your training and stuff, because, I mean, you know, you're the IFBB SA state champ as well from, was that 2007, is that correct? Uh. No, so the, the IFBB thing, man, kind of, when I first started competing, it was, um, we didn't have IFBB in Australia, it didn't exist. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, so I started competing in IMBA, um, which, uh, okay. which does exist, but not really anymore. Um, yeah. IMBA, WMBF. Um, so many acronyms. <laughs> so many, I can't even remember them. I'm trying to remember what they used to be. But a lot of the federations now, um, you know, there's been a lot of consolidation in the, in the competitive side of, of, of the industry as well, where a lot of the, the big federations around now didn't exist back when I first started competing back in, um, you know, back in 2004, I think was my first competition. So, um, yeah, the, the IFBB thing came about. I've only, uh, you know, I've been competing in the IFBB for five years now. Um, so, w which was when they first came to Australia with men's physique. 
Um, and yeah, okay. I made the switch to, to the IFB men's physique. Um, and so, yeah, I've been, I've been competing with the IFB for five years. I've been I'm, uh, back-to-back um, South Australian men's physique champions. So I won 2016, 2017. Um, and then congrats yeah thank you thank you i appreciate that and then last year i won the um australian title the australian overall title uh the oceania title the oceania overall title and um i was awarded my pro card as well so last year was yeah phenomenal for, for yeah man that's that's yeah. huge <laughs> yeah yeah so i guess how do you manage to fit it all in with with work and training as well like for a lot at home that do struggle to even say have the nine to five and then um, you know, work out after hours or whatever. How do you really manage to fill it all in? Man, you know what? It, it's, it's, it, it comes down to um, what your priorities are and, and um, you know, what you uh, allocate time to. I mean, everybody, we, we all have the same, you know, the same 24 hours in each yeah. and every day, um, believe it or not, as much as, you know, some people look like they've got more time than <laughs> others. We do all have the yeah. same 24 hours. And it really comes down to how you prioritize um, your time and what you, you spend your time doing. Um, you know, so in order for me to, to do what I do, you know, run a business, train, compete, um, you know, have, have my, my private life and, and everything, I have to make sacrifices. Um, you know, so like I don't, I don't watch TV like ever. It's just not something that I do. Um, yeah. You know, I, I don't really have time to socialize with, with friends who aren't, who aren't working for me, who, you know, guys that aren't part of massive Joe's. I just, it just, it's just not there. Well, it's not that I don't have time. It's not really a priority to me. You know, my exactly. priority yeah. is, uh, um, you know, spending time working on massive Joe's um, training, uh, spending time with my wife and my family. And, you know, that's, that's kind of, you know, that's my list of priorities. So that's how I kind of allocate the 24 hours that I've got each and every day. Um, and you know, that's, that's really what it comes down to, no matter what your goals are or what you have on your plate, it, it, it's a, it's, it's prioritization. Yeah. Well said. No, absolutely. Cause you know, you're doing so well in juggling everything. So I think there's a lot of value there. Um, so yeah, if you're watching at home yeah. and you're getting value from this, you know, please let us know in the comments, hashtag value. We'd love to hear from you. Yeah. Well, you, you know, you, you say that as well, Ross, but then there's probably people who would look at my life and think, man, that sucks. <laughs> like I want, I want to, I want to go and, you know, spend, spend time with my friends and, you know, go out and, and catch up with mates, you know, during the week and on weekends and whatnot. And that's what I mean. It comes down to priorities. Like the way that, that I allocate my time is, is, you know, probably not going to be the way that, you know, person X allocates their time. Um, yeah. What's about happiness as well? You know, where we're yeah. happy to allocate our time. Yeah, and that's and that's completely fine. Um, you know, it, it comes down to you know what sort of balance you want in your life and, and what your priorities are. You know, there's definitely no um, there's no right or wrong way. Um, you know, with with how you how you allocate your time and how you prioritize your time, and it's it's you know it's definitely something that you know I, I kind of. Um, you know, to go to go all deep and meaningful on you here, um, and we're kind of getting off track, but that's all good. Yeah, is that's I cool. Kind of, you know, I I, I, I kind of um, I worry a little bit about the the effect that that social media is having on on my generation and the generation before me as well, where there there tends to be kind of a lot of pressure on people to be successful in in different areas of their life. And I think it's very easy for, for people to kind of see what's being projected on social media and say, oh, you know, um, you know, someone like it might see me, for example, and someone might be like, well, you know, I need to spend more time working on my business. I need to spend more time, um, you know, working out. I need to, you know, kind of emulate what Joe's doing with his life because he's quote unquote successful. Um, but yeah. they do that to the detriment of their own happiness, um, you know, which I think yeah. is, is something that I kind of worry about a little bit because ultimately your, um, your set of values and how you prioritize your time and how you spend your time needs to, uh, you need to ultimately reflect your, your happiness. Um, and, you know, there shouldn't be somebody that this is the right way and what you're doing is the wrong way because you're not quote unquote successful in all these different areas of life like you should be. Um, you yeah. know, that, 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 I think that there's, you know, something to be said down that route of thinking. Yeah, I completely agree with you because the Instagram lifestyle isn't real. Um, and, you know, some, some are switched on to that. But, yeah, a lot of, say, the, the younger ones within the generation now, they, you know, don't realize that. And it, yeah. it's a question of, you know, oh, you know, Joe's successful, but 
what do you view as success? Because, you know, that, that's really up to you. Like, you know, everyone's different. So it's about whatever they're happy doing. So some might yeah. view success as just having, you know, a really uh, sound family life, yet others may view it as, you know, having, a, you know, supplement empire. And, you know, there's all these different levels. So at the end of the day, it's, it's that message. You're absolutely right. And getting out there is just whatever people, you know, feel comfortable doing and whatever they're happy doing, that should be what their focus is and, and they're all. So, you know, work-life balance is super important, but it's a question of, at what level of balance do you have? Because we all prioritize differently. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly right. Yeah. So no, we'll say, man, absolutely. So I guess, yeah, we, what's next with massive Joe's? Cause you know, it's just, it seems like it's just growing and growing and uh, you know, you open your new headquarters uh, actually just down the road from my house actually. So, yeah. you know, um, yeah. that's cool. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we're, we're doing this Facebook Live. You we literally could have come into the boardroom. We could have had this face, face-to-face chat. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, you know, we're, we, we've got a lot on our plate. Um, you know, we, we all, as, as a business, we always keep very busy, um, you know, doing different things and, and um, you know, uh, working on our growth as a business as well. So, I mean, we've got new retail stores in the pipeline. We've got two planned for the first quarter this year. Um, you know, we've got the, the uh, I mean, there's a, there's a lot happening, man. <laughs> I can kind of yeah. <laughs> down into different parts of the business. There's a, I mean, there's a lot of moving parts behind the business that people don't see. Um, you know, people see yeah. the, the, what we put on social media effectively because that's the easiest way of, of being transparent with what's happening in the business. Uh, yeah. That are- Exclusive to us, to other retailers, and we supply gyms, and we supply uh, personal trainers, and we send stuff over to New Zealand and internationally. So, you know, that's a big, big focus for us, and a big part of our business that, that most people never don't even know exists. Um, you know, people see the retail stores, and they see the, um, you know, the the online presence, and you know, they see the ads on Facebook and Instagram and whatnot. Um, but there's a there's a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes that uh, that that are you know quite valuable to the the growth of the business this year in particular um, and into the future as well. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely, and and that's the thing. There's so many moving parts behind the scenes, so many cogs that are going on. It's really just about, yeah. and I guess it comes back to the whole Instagram lifestyle where you know you only yep. people only see what you put up, but as a business yeah. owner, you can only put so much up because there's so much going on. Yeah, that's right. And then there's stuff that you don't necessarily want to put up as well. You know what I'm saying? So, the bad days. Yep. Some, well, not not necessarily bad days, but there's you know there's things that happen that that that's confidential to the business that you don't want to be posting all over you know all over social media and um and that sorts of you know those sorts of things. I mean, one of the reasons why. You know, we've never done as a business entered like small business awards and and um, um, financial review awards and that sort of stuff is like I don't want people knowing the you know the the um, ins and outs of how Massive Joe's works. I want people to kind of yeah. see what we want to show um, you know consumers and what we want to show our fans and our customers and the stuff that they're interested in. Um, but so far as the you know the internal workings of the business, there's some things you don't want to show. Um, because you know they're not nice to show, and then there's something that you don't <laughs> yeah. want to show because they're because they're confidential. So um, you know, there's always that that kind of balance in 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 the publicity side of the business as well. Yeah, that makes total sense. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, Joe. Well, this has been an absolute pleasure, man. Like, I, I thank you so much for coming on. Like, this has been just absolutely phenomenal. I mean, I'd love to hear about with with what coming up next. Like for your business, like you know, we'd really love yeah. to hear about anything new coming up, any new promotions. Um, you know, any, any new things that, you know, customers can get in touch with you for. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and, sorry. I, I, I think I'll, I'm missing the, uh, just that question. There. Uh, so, sorry, man. Yeah. So, uh, I think the internet cut out there a little bit. So, you know, with, um, you know, with anything, cause I, I saw on your social media as well, you're doing some uh, posts in regards to, you know, new voting for supplement and things like that. Um, you yeah. know, for, for those to be able to get in touch with you, is there any new promotions coming up or any new products or services that you'd like to promote while you're on the platform here today? Um, not really, man. I mean, we, you know, if you if you follow Massive Joe's on uh, on our socials or you're signed up to our newsletter, I know a lot of people are both. Um, you, you know, you kind of you can't miss it. You know, where where one of the things that we've kind of always done well as a business is is um, promote ourselves um, using the different tools that are at our disposal. So, you know, if you subscribe to us on YouTube or you follow us on Instagram or follow us on Facebook or you know, follow me personally on, on, on my social networks or check out our Snapchat or whatever it may be. 
um, you know, you, you, you can't really miss what's what's going on. Some people do, uh, but, uh, but you know, we'll, we'll get you one way or another. <laughs> <laughs> get him in eventually, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, man. No, absolutely. Well, yeah, Joe, honestly, thank you so much for coming on the show today. This has been an absolute pleasure. I'm so humbled that you came on the show today. Um, you know, and there's so much value from everyone at home that they've received just from, you know, managing time and how to start a business and how to grow a business. And it's just yep. been an absolute pleasure, man. Absolutely, man. Thank you for having me. It's, uh, it's always good to, uh, you know, to connect with, uh, with, with local entrepreneurs as well that are doing good things. So, yeah, it's been a, it's been a pleasure. Yeah, definitely. I know you're busy, so that's why I didn't want to uh, you know, keep you for too much longer. So yep. I figured I'd uh, wrap it up so you can get back to the hustle. <laughs> sure. But, um, yeah, Joe, thank you so much again. Everyone at home, Joseph Menzel, uh, massive Joe. So, dude, thanks so much. And, uh, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll chat soon. Thanks, Ross. Appreciate it, man. <laughs>